This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Good afternoon and welcome to the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Laura Duclos. And I'm Jasmine Bradford. The study abroad fair kicked off yesterday in the stub from 10 to 4, allowing students to learn more about their options traveling the world. Jordan Lejean has more about the global affair. The Texas Tech Study Abroad Office held a study abroad fair Wednesday in the sub. Students attending the fair were given information on how to study in places ranging from Spain and Germany to Russia and the Middle East. Michael Johnson, the International Agreement Administrator for Study Abroad, said the office hopes the fair influences many tech students. Um, ideally, for those students who are curious, who have maybe in the back of their head or at some point gone, hey, maybe I should study abroad. We can help them go start down that path. We can answer some of their questions. We can help them maybe define where they want to go or what they want to study or how do they accomplish that. Aaron Luna, a student assistant in the study abroad office who has spent time studying in Barcelona, Spain, said the fair gives him a great opportunity to share what he's learned with other students considering studying abroad. It's, it's an experience that most likely will not repeat again in your life. So, you know, just by encouraging him, telling you all the stuff you learn, telling you all the stuff you do, uh, traveling, meeting people from all around the world. So, you know, just try to give my input, you know, my personal experience and encouraging students to, to do it. Alyssa Schumann, who spent a semester in Australia and now works in the study abroad office, said the cost of studying out of the country should not stop students from considering it. One, you learn budget, which, I mean, in um, the future, you definitely need to know. Two, it's affordable for anyone and everyone. Uh, you just have to do research, do, uh, look at our scholarships uh, that we have, and just apply for them because a lot of the times people don't even apply. So five or six people will apply for them and they're automatically granted money. For MCTV, I'm Jordan Lejean. For more information on studying abroad, go to studyabroad.ttu.edu. Tech Activities Board is hosting a blood drive until 4 in the sub today. Volunteers are provided with refreshments and treats for their donation. The blood drive will continue through Saturday. With midterms in the near future, you might want to find new ways to relax and de-stress. Well, the Student Counseling Center is offering a therapy group for stress reduction through meditative drumming exercises. Instruments are provided and no musical experience is required. The group will meet on Thursdays from 12 to 1.30. To learn more about the group or other relaxing activities that the center provides, visit the TTU Student Counseling Center website. It's been exactly one month and five days since people around the world made their New Year's resolutions. Reporter Kathleen Davis went to the rec to see if tech students have been keeping up with their resolutions. Drop the cheeseburgers and put on your running shoes because it's that time of year again. Students are hitting the gym in the hopes of fulfilling their New Year's resolutions to get fit. And while Ruth Field, a senior anthropology major, is not a newbie to the gym, she still has a few goals for the year. Uh, my New Year's resolution was to do more strengthening because I had always done cardio and I had had some trouble with uh, injuries. According to a recent report, 45% of people in the U.S. make a New Year's resolution, usually involving some form of getting fit or losing weight, while only 8% actually achieve that goal. Field has a few tips for those that may be thinking of quitting. Um, you know, let yourself take breaks and don't be too hard on yourself, because if you're mad at yourself all the time, then it'll make it a lot harder to work out in. I mean, you still want it to be fun so that you'll actually go and do it. With so many people going to the gym lately, you may be wondering if there's a way to skip the sweating, machine-stealing crowd. Corbin Gilbert, an employee at the rec and a sophomore ESS major, tells us when the best time to get into the rec is. Earlier the better. If you want to get a good workout with no bother, come in um, in the mornings and there's usually nobody here in the mornings or so. The rec center has a variety of free classes during the week, such as yoga and Zumba, that students are invited to participate in. For more information on when these classes are, feel free to check out the rec center website. And here's Gilbert with some last advice. Um, don't give up. Stick with it. And uh, if it gets tough and you have to wait around with a lot of people here, just go through it, come early, and you'll get that done. And this is Kathleen Davis with MCTV. Last night, TAB hosted an open mic night in the sub, and the students showed up to sing their hearts out. Basically, open mic night is just an event where students can come out and perform. They can sing acoustic, they can do stand-up comedy, poetry, anything they want to do. It's basically an open mic. It's free for them to come. They have 10 minutes to do whatever they want, 
and it's a great place for people to come and chill and hang out and do homework and listen to great music. We were a little worried. We were a little worried with it, you know, have, or being like it might snow and stuff like that. But I think it's going to be good. I think everyone's coming here for the hot coffee and tea. It was really good. It was my first time ever trying stand-up comedy or any of that. I just, it was something I wanted to do, so I went out and did it, and I had a lot of fun to do this, because, I mean, it's a friendly environment. They aren't going to boo you out of a Barnes & Noble. I'm glad students made it out, despite the cold weather. Yeah, it was pretty cold last night and this morning. Our weather specialist, Carly Smith, has more on what to expect from the weather. Carly? Hey Laura, you know it is definitely feeling quite frigid out here today with the current tips, temps sitting at about 17 degrees. And so with that being said, it did snow this morning um, a little bit. If you can, there's still a little bit back here, so it's quite beautiful actually, but that does mean the road conditions are still dangerous with temps not reaching above freezing um, so overnight roads will definitely continue to be dangerous with any type of moisture on them and so with that being said you can always check uh, text dot for information about roads and so hopefully we can get a graphic pulled up that'll show you um, information that you where you can call in the website you can go to to look at cameras and pictures to see what the roads are looking like in your area but as we take a look at our three-day forecast, you'll see that the low tonight um, and into Friday morning will be 14 degrees. And so, but Friday things will start to warm up a bit with the high sitting at about 41. It'll continue to be cloudy, but the winds will be blowing from the south at five to 10 miles per hour. And there will still be a chance of about 10% for scattered snow flurries around the area. And so then Saturday, it'll warm up even more with a high at 60 degrees and mostly sunny skies with winds blowing from the west at 15 to 20 miles per hour. Sunday, the low will be 25 and the high 45, um, mostly sunny with winds at five to 15 miles per hour. So Sunday, another cold front is blowing through that will cool temperatures down. And Monday, we might actually see another chance for winter precipitation. So with that being said, um, it'll be a nice weekend and maybe another cold week ahead. Laura and Jasmine, back to you. Wow. So I know that the Olympics are starting up within these next couple of days. Do you have any information on what's going on in Sochi? Yes, actually, uh, the Olympics, some events have actually already started with snow um, slope style last night and some figure skating. But a cool fact about Sochi um, is it actually sits on the Black Sea. So it is a subtropical temperature. So with that being said, it's about 50 degrees there right now with the mountains being a little cooler, closer to freezing. So that's kind of cool, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is hard to imagine that Russia is actually warmer than Lubbock, Texas. But Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Carly. Um, that's all for the Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news.